Hi, let's go ahead and get this straight. You all made this contest extremely, extremely difficult to judge. I'm not even saying that, just to say that. Watch when you see all the entries. The top three entries seriously had so many small details separating each other. I had so much fun seriously seeing all the amount of work you all put into every single one of your entries. From all like your little ships lined up to dice lined up perfectly to like things floating in the air. So many different and unique ideas going into each entry. Ideas that I've never even thought of. And there was only one overlap in all the entries of games. I think I had a total of like maybe 75 entries. Out of all that, there was only one overlap in games. That is insane. It's so interesting to see all the diverse interests going into this product photography shoot. So a couple things to go over before announcing the winners. I know I hear your heart beating. I know you're waiting for this very moment. So am I actually, but do not skip this. Actually, make sure you watch the entire, make sure you watch this entire video all the way through from start to finish because there are a lot of things that I'm gonna talk about and a lot of things also you do not wanna miss. I'll also be putting up some of your entries in the end as well as posting them across social media throughout the week. I will try my best to put as many as I can, but if I were to put all of them into this video, it would end up being like a three hour long video. First off, the next photo contest is going to be my favorite type of photos, which are going to be creative photos. This was such a big hit when I hosted it on Instagram. You can actually see some highlights of it if you check out my Instagram profile. But for this next creative contest, it will once again be hosted here on YouTube. If you thought product photography was fun, if you thought this one was challenging. We are just getting started, my friend. Now, if you missed out on this product photography contest or if you're watching and product photography maybe isn't really your thing, make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on the next one. I only have about one or two more episodes left actually of the product photography series. So as soon as those wrap up, we're gonna revisit creative photos. Secondly, about today's contest, I wanna make sure this is crystal super duper clear. It is not easy to put yourself out there. There is a vulnerability when you submit your work online, especially for someone else, you know, me to judge. Thank you all so, so much for giving me this opportunity to see your amazing work. Remember that we are all in this together. We're all trying to improve. We're all trying to take this to the next level of board game photos, product photos, photography in general. You all took one giant step that many others didn't take. And that's putting yourself out there, being open to constructive feedback and being open to learning. If I could choose every single person to win this gear, done. But you know, I do hope that one day my channel gets big enough to the point where I can give away a full-blown camera or cameras. That is my ultimate dream is to just give away a bunch of cameras to all of you. When I can give away an epic camera to another aspiring photographer, that that's a dream. But with this contest and with all of you here, you have all helped me get one step closer to that. Two more things, I'm doing a major update to Patreon regarding photography. If you're interested in mentorship, both in photo and in video, and also if you like this contest and if you just like, you know, challenges in general, I'm working out some photography challenges that will be a month to month thing going forward. It's gonna be really fun. It's gonna help you build your skill set. So look out for that in a couple days. And here's the last thing, I swear as cheesy and as much of a weenie as it sounds, no one lost today. Let's go ahead and make sure that it's clear from the get-go. You cannot tell me that you were a better photographer before this than after taking the photos afterwards. I heard all of your stories. I heard there were people chasing sunlight. Huh? Chase collection, t-shirt, that's the whole reason behind the chase collection. There are people who tell me that it took days to take this one photo balancing with work and kids and family and just life and all that. You set aside time to get better. And for some of you now, you're gonna see every single product photo differently, right? Amazon listings, board game product photos, all that. Now it's going to be seen from a completely different perspective because you've done it and you put in the work so you know how much work goes into these photos now. It's cool, right? So if you happen to participate and it didn't work out, look, do not let that bother you. I've never won a single photo contest in my entire life. Never won a video contest, but you know, here I am. It doesn't mean you stop. So bottom line, do not get discouraged. You've made progress. You made a giant leap forward. You put yourself out there. And here we go. Okay, now introducing the three contest winners for the April 2021 product photography, starting with third place. This person showcased the characters of the game really, really well. They created a really nice perspective on box composition and really utilized the components from, you know, dice to gems to cards really well to fill in negative space that just makes the entire photo feel right. Third place goes to, whoa, whoa, are you serious? What, what just happened? You're seriously just gonna put some text up there? That's it? Call it a day? Yeah, something wrong with that? Mm, okay, yeah, I just, I had no idea you were that lazy nowadays. Cause what? I thought you would do more than just bloop, put some text up there. You know, I thought you were the whole cinematic guy. So that's why I was just kind of confused. 
you know, I was, was kind of taken aback. Okay, I'm pretty sure you were b in board games, right? The original owner that of this channel. Me. Why don't you do something? <laughs> I thought you would never ask. Third place winner goes to Kyle Dean at Master Jeeves on Instagram and at Master Jeeves 22 on Twitter. Kyle, congratulations, you have won a set of photography gear. Now Kyle chose who goes there and I've actually never even heard about this game, but let's go ahead and talk about this entry. So we have the hero shot right dead in center of who goes there, curved, angled, get some nice depth to the whole picture. I love how he used character boards to match edge to edge of the box. We have character boards in the front and we have character boards in the back to match the edge of the who goes there box in the very back. Now on top of that, he revealed and showed every single character face and didn't block a single one of them. Kyle, come on, I never taught any of this. This is photography instinct, well done. Then I love how the minis fill in all this negative space here in the center. They're juxtaposed, which I think is way more interesting than having them all in a straight line. I love this line of X's going down the middle of the player board. I feel like that really ties in the two boards together. And to tie in the rest of the photo, there's this nice arc of dice to the left corner. We have gems arced and stacked all around here on this set of dice. And to kick it flipping home, we have these beautiful fan of cards in the bottom right corner. These look kind of like remotes, I'm not totally sure, but they're slanted again, which parallels the who goes there main box. Now there are a couple of minor things I would have adjusted for this photo. Now there's this red X that's actually touching part of the board. I would have scooted that over a little bit to the left just so it's centered and so also it's not touching the board at all. The dice on the bottom left corner, I know that because this is an even number, it's hard to work with, but I would suggest doing two stacks of four versus five and three because it feels like there's one more dice missing or one more die missing in the left over here. And for the last final detail with the remotes on the bottom, Forgive me, I'm not sure what they totally are, but straying a little bit away from composition, if this red one actually could be switched on over to the greens, or if you could switch this green to like a red, I think it would have looked nicer for symmetry because when you have green, green, and then red, it's a little bit jarring, and then we have green over here to complete that. So just in terms of color, I would have definitely switched this to red and red or green, green, you know what I mean? in a way that it's a pattern, so it's not just green, green, red, green. But again, those are just minor, minor details that I personally would have adjusted. Either way, this is a fantastic composition overall. I love this entry. What a great job, Kyle. You did a fantastic job. You did amazing, my friend. Congratulations, and I hope you enjoy the new photography gear. Please message me across social media so I can get your shipping info and send it over ASAP. Now moving on to our second place winner. This person really took the spirit of this competition to the next level, really defined their own unique composition for this one, used all different kinds of heights, mixed in some unique angles, and really tied everything so seamlessly together. Second place winner goes to... Oh, okay. oh, okay. Yuna from More Meeples on Instagram, congratulations. This was such a beautiful entry. Like just staring at this photo, it made me stop and stare at how satisfying this composition was. It was just so, so good. Like when I see this, this is masterful use of shapes and leading lines. And let me just, let me just talk about this entry. Now Yuna used parks for her entry. Here is a perfect example of how the box doesn't have to be in the middle, yet it still works so seamlessly in the frame. I love how the overall composition is just this wave of happiness and calmness flowing throughout the frame. It's as if the waterfall is just flowing through this entire frame and I love it. I love how all the park cards stem from this one main card. We have cards slanted all the way from the left, we have cards going this way, and we have one final card going off to the center. They basically act as a shadow for the Denali Park card. The way they're slanted, just like the box, makes it feel like they're all connected to different parks. I also love what you did with the game board. I love how the game board is stood up and has multiple different directions. Having the game board tilted like that really works for this composition because it adds depth to the overall photo. The cherry on top was just having this camera in the back and the Polaroid in the front. That is intentional and that's choice because having the Polaroid in front of the camera, it's as if the camera is taking the actual photo. We have hikers filling in this unique negative space shape. With this Denali photo right in the center, I thought it was super unique to have that there along with this photo of the Denali park here. It's like a little Easter egg. These are the details that tell stories. And then I just love the overall use of different card heights from the second row to the first row to this being flat to this being completely elevated. Now a couple of things I might add and adjust. First, I might have played around with the campfires to help them fill in the negative space over here. Like maybe I would have put them more so like this 
just so it helps fill in the frame and then maybe I would have added these cars to fill in the space that we moved the campfire over to. So maybe added like two or three more of these kind of cards. I might have also grouped the hikers together so green with green, pink with pink right next to each other instead of having them um, all spread apart like blues over here and whites over here. I might have even stretched it a little bit more and added in the blue hikers together over here that way they match with the Denali Park and then have the green hikers over here with Shenandoah and so on. But again, those are just subtle details. Key Master Games needs to see this overall composition of their game. This was so beautifully done. Good job, Yuna. I can't wait to send you the photo gear. Everyone comment down below and tell Kyle what amazing job he did. Tell Yuna how beautiful her park composition is. This was so well done. Now that leads us to one more photographer and then we also have some honorable mentions, so don't leave yet. This next photographer really took patience, meticulousness, and overall refined detail of this overall composition and really made it stand out. I just wanted to sell all my gear and like turn off my camera, just throw all that to the side and go buy this game because that's how beautifully done this composition was. First place goes to Diane from Woman Like Board Games, congratulations. You have defined what composition is, what product photography is. It makes me want to go buy Jurassic Park. And that's the whole point of this series. That's the whole point of this contest. Great, great job. Like this, this was so, so well done. Congratulations on winning the first ever YouTube board game photo contest. You deserve it. This is freaking amazing. This is mind blowing. To say you are talented is an understatement. I, it was actually kind of funny because as I was analyzing her photo, and I was making notes about it, like what I really liked about it. I went back and read her story behind, you know, this overall composition and everything like matched so well. It was so funny. Some of the points I jotted down made me wonder if certain parts and certain choices were intentional and they actually were. So it was so cool and so crazy how all this was put together. Let me explain. Now, first off for Jurassic Park, I actually wouldn't have liked this straight at all because it matches the theme so well. So there is a slight shift, a slight slant even though this is levitating over here. And that works out because it feels like the claw marks are kind of just dragging the box downward in this direction. I think that works so well for how the hero was portrayed. But in general, just having the box levitating, it really works for Jurassic Park. On top of that, she went and made every single one of these player boards stand up just like that. They showcase every single face, not a single face is hidden. I love how John Hammond is pointing in this direction and Dr. Malcolm is pointing this direction. What's amazing about this composition is that everything is just pointing towards the center, and I love that. I love how she's forming this overall arc with the composition, and it makes me feel like I'm actually entering Jurassic Park either through the movie or through the actual Universal Studios theme park. And when I went back to Diane's story and like read about it, this was actually intentional. This was what she was trying to do to begin with, and I, th I thought that was so cool and so funny that they matched so well. There's so much thought and time that went into this photo. I loved how there's this die that's put up vertically. I mentioned it in a past video where if you have dice, it's better to just like leave them levitating because I feel like that's the most interesting thing you can do unless you go off and just like lift up each one one by one, but it wouldn't really work. However, I never considered having one die by itself and I think it works here because the box is already levitating, the player boards are already levitating. To contrast that, having one die tilted up, those are the subtle details that I love in the photo. A big part that I think people overlook in composition is it's not just about the entire frame, but it's about all those small little details that add up together to construct the overall photo. In this case, the die is not a critical component of the board game. There aren't multiple dice, there's just one single die. And I think just raising that a little bit, giving that very, very tiny extra depth to the photo really counts. I also love how the dinosaurs are facing the meeples in the park. And on top of that, those dinosaurs that are eating the meeples or at least facing the meeples, they match the ones that are flat on the table of the player board. So for example, Dr. Malcolm's is a black meeple and it matches on along the same side here. I think the key highlight of Diane's photo is intention and to also use the same components but show them differently. Here's a player board flat on the table. Here's a player board standing up. Here's a player board shifted over to the right. Here's that same symmetry over here on the right side. Here's a card flat on the table. Here's a card vertically. In terms of composition, the only thing I would have adjusted for this photo is to actually put this die 
right here in the center just to fill in this negative space over here. Now you'll also notice that she put player cards opposite to their player board and I think that really helps tie in the entire photo. It makes it feel full. Now this is an extremely minor thing that I might have changed away from composition. So that is in terms of color. I think I would have put Tim's card over here and then arrange the colors. So that way it goes like brown, orange, yellow, and then pink. Just so it creates like this uniform gradient. So this side would have ended up with blue, teal, green, and purple, and then all the other colors on the other side. But overall, stunning image. Diane, you did an incredible job. Everyone, please comment down below and tell Diane that she did amazing on this Jurassic Park winner of an image. So those are our three winners across all entries for the first ever board game photo contest. Please congratulate all the winners. And again, everyone, it was so incredibly difficult to narrow it down to only three photos. But I do have three more honorable mentions that I think all brought something very unique to the table that we can all learn from. I also wanted to give these three honorable mentions one of my shirts as well. So please, you three, message me as well. The first honorable mention goes to Daniel from Board Game Feast with this entry of Cubitos. Now, I think this one ties in the overall theme of composition so well with the theme of the game because everything is cubicle. The outside frame is the box. Everything is so neat, tidy, straightforward. I love how precise the gaps are in between each and every card. I love the way the game boards are laid out. This makes my OCD incredibly happy. The only thing I might have adjusted here is to actually make the box straight just so it matches in everything in line. But I love this entry on Cubitos. Thank you so much, Daniel, for participating. And please message me so I can send you a photography shirt. The second honorable mention goes to Angel at Unbirthday Angel on Twitter. This entry is for Maduris, if I'm saying that correctly. But this entry brought in something that I thought was very cool and I think is a technique that we can all learn from. So what she did was she made this arc with the components and she only showed about half of the board game. But I think it works so well here because it ties in the entire frame. So you have this arc of tiles from the board and then it goes down into the components. It feels like there's this 3D element to the overall photo and there's just this unified circle going back to the board game box. A minor thing I would have adjusted is to actually stack the tokens so that way they have nice little columns within those separate piles. But other than that, beautiful entry. Thank you so much for submitting Angel and please message me so I can send you a shirt as well. This final honorable mention is using Spirits of the Wild, which I now want to pick up as well. Now I think this game has to do with constellations and I think it works so well because it started off with all the spirit animals up top, which I think is perfect because you know, you imagine stars, you imagine them up above. So seeing the constellations starting off first with that big arc, overall arc of the spirit animals over the rest of the components, perfect, perfectly done. I love how the wolf is not staring at the camera, but shifted off to the side. So it gets a nice little dramatic shadow. Everything else kind of falls into place into this V shape. I think the bottom actually has two separate fox cars that match in unison, which I think is very cool, both for putting together in terms of the composition and for the game itself. And I also thought this was a great creative choice in putting the little resin markers or those little tokens sprinkled throughout the board so you can see where they're actually being used and placed. If they were only in one pile, then I wouldn't have known necessarily to use them in those individual circles. It could be an assumption but I like how placing them there cements that mechanic. Negative space is good here because we don't always have to fill everything in frame. The only minor change I would have made here, even if it has gameplay involved, is to actually, again with colors, I would have mixed them together so all the colors are together or at least in one unified gradient. And also I would have shifted the camera down a little bit more so you see more of the box instead of like an overview shot. You're kind of looking more of the box like this. Okay, that is it for me. Thank you all so much for this amazing photo contest. I had so much fun putting it together. Don't worry, there will be plenty more to come. Everyone did a fantastic job. I'm gonna throw some more photos here on the screen as well as their social media. Please follow all of these amazing photographers and contestants for the contest. With that, have a wonderful day, keep creating, and I'll see you all in the next video.